Hey everybody, we're back with our third screencast, continuing the theme from our last video, screenshots, but this time on Mac OS. But before we get started, a little history lesson. Prior to the introduction of Mac OS Mojave last year, taking a screenshot on Mac OS was much less discoverable for the average user, requiring them to seek out the non-obvious key commands used to take them. Thankfully, Apple was listening to professionals like us and to regular users and added more robust features on macOS for taking and marking up screenshots, while also making these new features more discoverable by way of a new screenshots app. And these new features will seem very reminiscent to anyone familiar with taking screenshots on iOS. Speaking of which, if you want to learn more about screenshots on iOS, check out our last video. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell to be alerted the moment we release new tutorials. Okay. So let's get into the screencast. First, how do you take a screenshot in macOS? In the past, you would trigger a screenshot using one of two keyboard shortcuts, Command Shift 3 to take a picture of the entire desktop, or Command Shift 4 to target an area of your screen for capture. In macOS Mojave, you can invoke the new screenshot interface by using the shortcut Command Shift 5, or if you prefer, you can add the new screenshot application to your dock by visiting Launchpad, opening the folder labeled Other, and then dragging the screenshot app to your dock. Our preference is to use the keyboard shortcuts, but for today's tutorial, we'll be using the new screenshot app. When you launch the app, you're presented with a heads-up display featuring tools divided into sections. Starting from the left, we have Capture Entire Screen, Capture Selected Window, and Capture Selected Portion. These are your still image screenshot tools. Next, we have an options section with a disclosure triangle that reveals three subsections, including where you want to save the screenshot, countdown timer options, and further options to let you enable or disable the floating thumbnail, show or hide the mouse pointer, and remember the last selection for using with your next screenshot. And lastly, we have the capture button, which you press when you're ready to take the shot. Okay, so let's do a quick demo of each. First, I'm going to take a picture of the entire desktop by clicking on the Capture Entire Screen button and then clicking Capture. You'll notice that a thumbnail appears on the bottom right and then disappears and that picture lands on my desktop. Okay, so next up, I'm going to capture a selected window. So I have this window open in front of me, and I'll come down and click Capture Selected Window, move my mouse up into the window, and you'll notice the window becomes highlighted with a little camera icon inside. And if I just tap or click, the screenshot preview appears on the bottom right-hand corner and then disappears and goes to my desktop. All right, last one. This time, I'm going to tap on Capture Selected Portion. And when I do, a square with little circle handles appears in the center of the screen. And if I get those handles dragged around an area I want to take a picture of, maybe this portion of the website, and get that set how I like it, come down to the capture button and click or tap. And the screenshot appears on the bottom right-hand corner. And then, of course, after a couple of seconds, appears on the desktop. All right, now one little trick that I think is worth noting, when you do take a screenshot, let's say, for example, a portion of the screen like I just did, I'm going to go ahead and hit capture again. And when I do, the screenshot appears in the bottom right. But if I right click on it, I'm given options to save it to a different location, open it in particular applications, show where it is in the finder, delete it, mark up, or close. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and delete it. Okay, now let's take a look at the markup tools. I'm going to take a screenshot of a web page. And when I do, of course, it ends up previewing in the bottom right hand corner. But if I go ahead and click on it, it brings it up in Quick Look. And we have helpful markup tools that we can use to draw notes or messages on the screenshot itself. Okay, so let's do a quick run through of the tools we have available. Starting from the left, we have Sketch shapes, 
text highlight section, and that's only available when marking up PDFs in the preview app. Signature, shape style, border color, fill color, text style, rotation, and lastly, cropping tools. Rounding out the top right are the done, trash, and share buttons. Okay, demo time. To draw on your screenshot, select the sketch tool and use a mouse, trackpad, or stylus to create your sketch annotation. To place a shape, click the Shapes tool and choose from a variety of shapes. Once a shape is added, you can use the Shape Style tool to change the line thickness, as well as the Border and Fill Color tools to adjust what colors you want in your shape. And it should be noted, shapes can be resized easily by grabbing the little blue handles and moving them inwards or outwards or diagonally. Included at the bottom of the shape section are the highlight area and magnifier tools. When you choose the highlight area tool, a box appears on your screenshot that highlights the area it's over. You can change the dimensions of the highlight box as well as move it anywhere you need on your shot. The magnifier tool, simply put, magnifies an area of your screenshot that you want to draw attention to. The magnification diameter can be made smaller or larger by dragging the blue circle inwards or outwards, and the magnification percentage can be increased or decreased by dragging the green circle around the magnifier itself. Next up is the text tool. Use this tool to insert an editable text box on your screenshot. Pro tip, before you start typing, head over to the text style tool to set the font size, color, formatting, and alignment of your text. Of course, these attributes can be modified after typing as well. It's just more efficient to do it beforehand. To move your text box, select it and drag it into place. As mentioned earlier, the next tool, Highlight Selection, is only available when marking up PDFs. Since we're dealing with screenshots today and not PDFs, we're going to go ahead and skip this tool. Following, we have the signature tool, which is a real time saver when you have to sign screenshots or PDFs. To add a signature, click Create Signature, and you can either draw it out using a trackpad or sign a piece of paper and use the eyesight camera to capture a picture of your signature, which is just super cool. Once you have it captured, just click on the signature you want to use, resize it if needed and move it into place. Rounding out the editing tools is rotation and cropping. You have rotate left and right, which function exactly as you would imagine. And then the cropping tool that when selected brings up the familiar Mac OS and iOS cropping interface. Simply click and hold on any of the blue handles around the image to crop it down to your liking. You can crop vertically, horizontally, or diagonally. Okay. On to the screen recording options. In the past, if you wanted to record your screen on your Mac, you had to use Apple's media playback app, QuickTime. And if you're thinking, that doesn't seem very intuitive, you'd be right about that. Thankfully, in Mojave, Apple has relocated it to the new Screenshots app and even added some useful features it lacked before. In the section next to the screenshot tools that we just covered, there are two more options one for record entire screen and record selected portion. These are your screen recording tools. Just like with screenshots, we have an options section with a disclosure triangle that reveals four subsections, including where you want to save the screen recording, a countdown timer, which microphone you want to use for voiceover, and further options to let you enable or disable the floating thumbnail, remember your last selection, for use with your next screen recording, and the option to show mouse clicks during the recording, which can be really helpful to guide people's eyes around the screen when you're clicking on things. And lastly, we have the record button, which you press when you want to start recording. So let's record. So starting off, if I want to just record my entire screen, I come down to the record entire screen button in the toolbar and come over to where it says record. Go ahead and click on that. And 
you'll notice in the menu bar, a circle with a black square has appeared. That circle is to indicate that you are currently screen recording. Now, if I'm happy with what I've done, maybe I want to move things around the screen and show somebody what's going on. I come up to that circle, click or tap it, and the screen recording is previewed in the bottom right, just like before with the screenshots. And if I wait a moment, it disappears and is placed on my desktop, and that's it. Now, if I want to record a portion of my screen, I bring up the interface again, and this time move over to record selected portion. I'll go ahead and click on that, and the familiar portion box, as it were, appears, and I can change its shape by grabbing the handles and moving that around. And I can even put my mouse inside of it and reposition where I'm going to record the screen. Once I'm set, I'll simply press record again. And just like before, the white circle with the black square is placed in my menu bar to indicate that I am recording, but this time just a portion of my screen. If I'm happy with that, I'll come up to the circle, click it, and it's put in a preview mode, but this time I'm going to click it to bring it up in Quick Look. Now, unlike the screenshot tools from before, screen recording doesn't allow markup, but it does allow you to edit down your video if it's too long. To do that, you come up to the trim icon in the toolbar, and when you click it, you'll notice that a yellow frame is placed around the length of your screen recording. To change the length, simply drag from the left or drag from the right to shorten the length of your screen recording. Now, if you're happy with your screen recording and you want to save it for use later, you can hit done. Or, right in this moment, you can go right to the share icon, tap it, and choose how you'd like to share it. Okay, that brings us to the end of our screencast. As you can see, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with screenshots in macOS Mojave. And if you have any questions, let us know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. We really appreciate it. We hope you learned something new today. We'd like to reach as many people as possible with our training videos, and you can help by giving us a like and subscribing to our channel. And when you do subscribe, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss an episode. Also, we really appreciate feedback, so let us know what you think in the comments. Thanks again. See you soon.